Does Putin control Britain? Let's play a game. I'm going to be president, a dictator of a country. Let's say Russia. I'm playing the bad guy. Now, as a dictator, I've found Britain to be really annoying. It's meddling in my affairs, it's not allowing currency to flow through London grad as much as I'd like. So I've decided that I'm going to teach them a proper lesson. I'm going to cause them as much damage as possible without going to a nuclear war situation and to advance myself and my country's interest as much as possible. Having spoken to my agents, I think I've found a way to do this. Britain has no natural born requirements to be a member of parliament, so for example, I could be born in the USA, brought up in the USA, and move to England, get a passport, and become MP or maybe even Prime Minister. Essentially a very similar story to that of Boris Johnson. My agents have also told me of a second loophole that citizens can give political donations to people I want elected inside the British Parliament. They could be Russian sympathisers, or people who believe in right-wing ideology, or people that will cause damage to Britain. So I'm going to send agents that I can control to Britain to become citizens. The key will be getting them passports. For a shortcut, I will get them to apply for a Tier 1 visa. They can apply to settle in the UK after 5 years if they invest 2 million, three years if they invest five, and two years if they invest 10 million. After 12 months, they could apply for UK citizenship. That will cost about another 1,500 to apply for. A drop in the well. Then they will be eligible for a British passport. Once they've lived in the UK for six years, stayed 75% of the time, don't break any laws, and made themselves look like they have good moral character, knowledge of UK culture, and at least one UK language. So the question I'm going to now ask my agent is, is there anything that prevents me from doing this? The answer? Yet. No. And the best bit is, it's probably going to cost me about 70 million in total, plus another 1 million a year. So now I'm in a great position. I now have 35 citizen agents in Britain. They've all invested 10 million, they've kept a clean record, and they've lived there for 8 years. They all have passports. They are now free to apply for Parliament, or to set up groups to give political donations. I now have the power to lobby, draft, and shape the laws that govern the United Kingdom. So my next question to my agents are, are there any limits on the legislation that I'm now allowed to influence or touch? Yet, No. There's no limit. Now that they are British citizen agents, I can create political parties sponsor MPs, create lobby groups, even set up businesses and constituencies and threaten to remove them if the MP doesn't cooperate with what I want. There are now no limits on having pro-Russia laws. There is now an ability to stop laws that might threaten Russian interest. I've now found the MPs that I'm looking for and I've given instructions that the donations are on condition that the MPs follow what we want them to do, to vote for, what we want them to construct, whether it's data cables, legislation, or not investigating alleged law breaking. And the best bit, at most this has cost me 300 million plus a million a year. But it's given me more influence and power over the British Parliament than a citizen who votes. The sad thing is you think I might be joking about all of this or that I'm embellishing it to be able to make YouTube videos and get views, but Unfortunately, 1 in 10 Conservatives have been sponsored by Russian oligarchs. In this picture, you're looking at Alexander Tomerko, a former Russian arms dealer, and now director of a British company called Aquind. He's also a Conservative Party donor. Tomerko is now a British citizen. The people, the MPs that you're seeing in front of you, are MPs that receive donations from Alexander Tomerko. In total, he's given about 1.5 million to the Tory party, is regularly invited to meet with ministers, and has been a drinking partner of Boris Johnson. On the 22nd of February 2022, MP for the Liberal Democrats, Leila Moran, listed off another 35 people suspected to having too close a tie to Vladimir Putin. This included Roman Abramovich. Thousands of years ago, the philosopher Plato predicted that democracy never lasts like to think we can prove even him wrong.
For a democracy to survive, it can't just have a powerful government. The government needs to have checks and balances, and currently there are few, if any, on the government. Especially as we've seen Boris Johnson recently completely and utterly flout the law, and has now been investigated by the police and interviewed by the police under caution, something that has never happened before. He's repeatedly lied in Parliament, and he's obviously been a bit of a scoundrel and a cheat throughout his life, taking cocaine, offering to aid and abet people to beat up British citizens. For me personally, the first thing I do is turn the House of Lords into a proportional representative system with a 10-year term, so that we have politicians looking at the long term, not just every four years. That would mean that everyone's vote actually counts. The second chamber would be a check on the first. This would help and allow us to have a formalised constitution protecting key rights. And that would also enable the Supreme Court to have more leverage because they could always look to the constitution to be able to put a check on the government when it overreached its mark. These are obviously just a few ideas and solutions to some of the problems that have taken place within the UK system. However, it doesn't necessarily solve the problem of having former KGB agents coming into the country, becoming citizens, and then influencing how the system operates. If you want to go deeper down the rabbit hole, you really need to watch my film From Russia With No Love, available in the description. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters who help keep this channel running and going, and also free from influence from Russia. I can honestly say that the donations are put into my account and it doesn't influence my decision as to what I produce. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, the link is in the description.